The rising sun shined in through the partly open curtains, at the end of a room littered in everything from empty liquor bottles to pizza boxes. On top of the bed was John, who was now wide awake. He laid atop the sheets in nothing but mud-crusted blue jeans and cowboy boots. He rubbed his face and turned his head to the buzzing alarm clock on the tall white dresser. He glared as though expecting it to answer him for going off, and after a moment, forced himself out of bed. John shuffled into the kitchen. The radio that was usually on and tuned to the country western station was playing nothing but static. <sighs> Seriously? He went to the counter to make himself some liquid breakfast and noticed a small piece of paper stuck to the coffee maker. It read, Passed out at Dunnigan's, took you home. When you sober up, get the hell out of there. I'm headed to Indiana, a safe zone the boys were talking about. Patrick. Patrick going to a safe zone in Indiana was probably something important, but John was too tired and hung over to care. He rubbed his eyelids and put the note down on the counter. Later that morning, John took a shower and learned his long, bushy beard was gone. Whatever happened last night, he didn't remember any of it. He enjoyed a cup of cold black coffee and relaxed in his reclining chair, hoping to catch a game of soccer. As he tried to find the channel, he noticed the guide was replaced with a national alert message. The hell is up with this thing? He walked up to the television to read the message. CDC says virus incurable. Yeah, well neither is AIDS. People live with that. John threw the remote to the floor and went back to his chair. If he couldn't watch a game, he could spend time with his family in his dreams. Half an hour later, after dreaming of watching cartoons with Ellie, the phone rang. John looked to the phone and mumbled as he got up to answer. Damn it. I miss you girls. He picked up the phone to hear breathing. It sounded to be his sister-in-law, Kinsley. You fucking bitch. Morning. Seriously? What are you still doing home? The fall? At work? I don't go back till the second of the n of next month. No, not work. What are you still doing home? Are you okay? You've been living under a rock. A bar, mostly. You still live alone, don't you? John looked around, as though expecting to see someone. Yeah, Kins. I'm alone. What about it? You have any plans? You mean like hooking up? No, for the goddamn virus! What sickness? Maybe the one people's been calling the mad disease. Ever heard of it? Everybody else has for the last two years. <laughs> that bullshit again? You do know this whole thing is just gonna blow over, don't ya? And they said- Please. I want you to come stay with us. Just until we know what's going on. I don't know. They said it's gotten worse these last two months. For God's sake, John, how can be you so ignorant to the whole thing? <sighs> they don't know what's next. Just please. Even the government's scared of this. Kins. Please. If I come all that way, I want gas money. I, I don't care, just get here. You really are taking this seriously, huh? If the CDC is scared, why shouldn't we be? Yeah, yeah, okay. If traffic's good, I should get there sometime tonight. Thank you. After hanging up the phone, John laughed. He couldn't believe he was about to drive all the way from Illinois to Pennsylvania just because Kinsley asked him to. When all this blows over, you're gonna look pretty stupid. After leaving Illinois, long after the sun had gone down, John found himself on a Wisconsin highway full of abandoned and crashed cars. The only light being cast from his headlights, and nearby cars appeared to be covered in blood and looted suitcases. Windows were shattered, and it looked as though people were still sitting in some of them. Slowly driving between the cars, John spotted a small figure walking on the side of the road. He had seen many people along the way. A lot of them he thought were sick due to their strange movements and behavior. However, this person was walking just fine, and because of them being a child, he felt compelled to stop. What if that were Ellie? Coming to a stop and quickly exiting his truck, John rushed over to them. Excuse me. Uh, are you okay? The child turned around, and the headlights revealed smears of dried blood going down her chalk-white arms. Freckles stretched from one cheek to the other, going over her nose and some on her forehead. Among them were speckles of crusted blood. Are you sick? John's eyes widened, and he jumped back. Are you sick? What happened to you? I'm not sick. The girl lifted her trembling arms and rubbed her eyes. Are you? Yeah. He stared at the dark red stain on the front of her white top and the thin trickles of dried blood that went down her face. No! Uh, I mean, I... No. I'm good. Are you? Tears made paths down the grime on her face. Yes. Do you need help? 
The girl tensed up. Mister? Yeah? There... There's people. People? John looked back, and his heart stopped. Two people stumbled towards them. The dark made it difficult to see, and though he couldn't tell for sure, one of them appeared to have a shovel lodged into their stomach. Some organs stuck out from the gash, and a flower pot was jammed onto their head. The other person had several slashes across their face as though someone attacked them with a garden weasel. John hurried back to the truck, slammed the door shut, and stared at the sick people shuffling around. The girl pulled on the door as the people stumbled towards her. It's locked! Here! Get in! John threw the door open and pulled the girl inside. Go! He slammed his foot on the gas, and they sped up the road. The sick people appeared to be harmless, but the sight of them, the guts spilling up from one of them, and the slashes disfiguring the other, truly frightened him. They moved like monsters, smelled like rotted corpses, and remembering how serious Kinsley was taking things, he thought it would be best to try to avoid them whenever possible. A few minutes later, after John had caught his breath and calmed down, My name's John, by the way. Uh... Never been in this kind of situation before. Final loss, kid. His skin crawled when he glanced at her. Especially one who's covered in... Well, whatever that is. It's... blood. Hey, is... there somewhere I can take you? I don't know. Tears mixed with blood dripped off the girl's face. Mom said we were going to my Aunt Cheryl's in Florida. But that's really a long ways away. She wiped her nose and got a mix of snot and blood smeared on her arm. Do you know anybody who can get you there? No. Nobody's left. The sick people got them all. The sick people got who? Everybody. As they continued their drive, the girl wiped away her tears, getting blood all over her hands, and then snorted the snot back up her nose. My name's Rachel. Hey, I, I know them people back there were scary looking, but how do we know we didn't just leave behind some good people? People I could have helped. They were scary. Like you said, they walked funny. And who else would be on some random road at night with no car or gun? You... you ain't sick. And you were on that road with no... Hey, what would they need guns for? Why would you need a gun? On John's right hip was a holster with a shell-filled revolver in it. It was a gift. So... Where are we going? I'm going to Pennsylvania. Can I come? I'd rather get you to somebody you know. Someone who can help you. The last thing I need is to get pulled over with some bloody kid in my truck. I told you, nobody's left. So can I come with you? Why do you wanna- He shivered when he glanced at her. Uh, hold that thought. John turned off his headlights and stopped the truck. He grabbed a bottle of water off the dashboard and a cloth from between the seats. Here, wash that gunk off your face. Rachel opened the bottle and took a drink. So, why would you want to come? Why not find some family like Aunt Sharon? I told you, the sick people got everyone. And Aunt Shirley's in Florida. I already told you this stuff. Besides, I know I can trust you. If you were bad, then you wouldn't have stopped and helped me. How old are you? Ten. <laughs> you can trust me. But not all strangers are nice. For all you know, they might just be acting nice to trick you later. But you're not going to trick me. You're nice, right? I try to be. So you're a good guy. Huh, well, I'd, I'd like to think so. And you saved me from being eaten. What are you talking about? They would have ate me. Like, they would have bit me until I was all gone. Sick people eat people. Oh, huh. They uh, eat people, do they? Yeah, the sick people are crazy. And when they get you, they eat you. I watched it happen. Come on now, kid. You never saw somebody get ate. Yes, I did. It happened to my mom and dad. It's gonna happen to you two if you don't believe me. Uh, hey. I'm not lying. Okay. Maybe you're not. He took the bottle and cloth from her. But think about it for a second. He poured some water on the cloth and started washing the blood from her face. I've never seen this stuff before. But you have. It sounds crazy to me right now, but... Maybe one day it won't. After he finished cleaning her face and arms, he tossed the cloth on the floor and handed her the bottle. Drink it if you want it.
I had lots of luck, but it's all been bad. No matter how I struggle and strive, I never get out of this world alive. My fishing pole broke, the bike's full of sand. A woman ran away with another man. No matter how I struggle and strive, I never get out. My distant uncle passed away and left me quite a batch. And I was living high until the fatal day. A lawyer proved I wasn't born, I was only hats. I ain't going to wear wrinkles in my brow. Cause nothing's ever going to be alright, no how. No matter how I struggle and strive, I never get out of this. You're the lady, a lady, a lady, a lady, a lady. These shabby shoes I'm wearing all the time, they're full of holes and nails. And brother, if I stepped on a worn out dime, I bet a dollar I could tell you if it was heads or tails. I ain't gonna wear wrinkles in my brow. Cause nothing's ever gonna be alright, no how No matter how I struggle and strive I never get out of